Hey, Williams, good to see you. You know, you said when you first talked to us that you were partially excited about joining this team because of that defensive front. Uh -huh. After having a few days of training camp, you know, kind of in shells and stuff like that, what has it actually been like with you guys playing a little bit more at full speed behind that defensive front? Oh, man, it's been great just to play behind those guys. All of them guys are first-round talent, so they get out the quarterback, so it's making my job easier for a change. <laughs> and then the other thing is that Landon Collins has obviously returned to the team. He was somebody else that you kind of spoke towards. How much easier has it been having him on the back end? What are some things you've noticed about his game since he returned back from his Achilles? Oh, he's a He's a natural leader. He's a smart guy. Uh, me and him communicate a lot during plays because he lined up a lot on my side. So he's just, he just a smart player, and I'm just soaking up everything that he know about the defense. He's getting me on the same page, so we all doing it as one and having fun. What's it been like battling Terry? Oh, it's fun, man. You know, we talking a little noise, but it be low, though. It had to be real close to his, but we talking a little noise. Uh, he's, a, he's a great receiver, and I'm just out here getting better every day. I'm getting him better. He's getting me better. And it's, it's, it's nothing like playing two good people at one position out there competing. What's it been like adjusting to Jack Del Rio's defense? I know you said maybe play a little more zone than, than you were used to, but kind of what's that transition been like? Oh, it's been easy for me. We have great coaches. Uh, they go to the, the tiny, tiny details. So, you know, in, on this league, we kind of forget to go to the, uh, the fundamentals and the little details, but coach is doing a good job of doing that, and I'm, I feel like I'm caught up to speed. You faced Terry last year, uh -huh. too. What's been your impression of him in this camp? Uh, he, he's got way better, man. Uh, we, we both got better. He's making me better. I'm making him better. And we just out there competing and having fun. You know, the fans are making it a big deal. But, we, you know, it's funny to me because of the, the, uh, we played each other. But it's fun, man. We just go out there and compete. Uh, if I did something wrong, I let them know that, okay, I did that wrong. He would tell me if he did something wrong. So we just out there competing. Where is he better? Because he's talked about working on his releases. Where is he better? Oh, yeah, his, his releases are definitely better, way better. You know, since I played him uh, last year, he, he's doing sudden moves. He's giving you a little something at the line. So he's making it harder for DBs. Thank you. Hey, William, um, in certain units, you talk about, we talk about how you got to let the instincts eventually kick in so you kind of everybody knows they're on the same page uh -huh. beyond even just knowing the playbook. For the secondary, you're new. Bobby McCain's new and all that. How long do you think it takes for a secondary to get that feel with each other to everybody kind of know, you know where you're going to be and what the other guy is going to do? Uh, it don't really take long. Like They, they got a great culture here. Uh, we have great uh, communication skills. So we all just do a lot of things off the field that people don't know about as well that make it easier on the field. So we just get as a one unit. Uh, we go over things and tell them how he's seen it and how I've seen it, and we play it accordingly. And some of obviously for you is just adjusting to a new defense. You, you obviously had practices earlier in the year, but what's like been the biggest adjustment so far for you with what Jack Del Rio is looking to do? Uh, uh, it's more a zone. You know, I, I came from a, a kind of man system. So with the zone, I'm just getting comfortable on where guys need to be, like linebackers, safeties, and knowing where they need to be and what I need to do to make plays in the defense. Um, so Cam Curl coming into his second year here. I mean, what have you seen from his growth and development over the past few weeks? Oh man, uh, I have. I wasn't uh, here last year, but this year he's flying around. It seems like he's he's a smart football player. I, I don't know how he was as a rookie, but he he's doing real good right now. I was just wondering if we, to follow up uh, what you were saying about the little details in, in Jack's zone and kind of where those other defenders are. What are, are there any examples maybe you've seen in the first few days about, hey, this is kind of what I need to look for here? Or any examples that you've seen in terms of transitioning? Oh, yeah. Well, it's just, it just slowing the game down in your mind. Uh, with, with, with you're seeing the, uh, the whole defense is playing a uh, quarterback with vision, you have to see the whole picture and what they're trying to do. And that's all I'm out there just – figuring out the picture, who I need to have my eyes on to be disciplined while I'm playing it. Going back to that defensive front, um, and then you talked about the whole group earlier, but just specifically Montez and Chase. Early thoughts on them. Oh, man, they, they beasts, man. Them, them guys got a, a motor out this rural, you know, and they talk a little bit, so I love that. Oh, well, 
I over exaggerate a lot. They they talk a lot, man. I love that having guys up front that give you that energy. You know, it's all about energy when you're playing in this lead, and they definitely give it to you. So I'm definitely excited about that. Have you have you, have you watched them run? Oh, they run. <laughs> I said talk a little bit, but now you got Fitz hitting Terry on a deep ball, and uh, yeah. they're kind of kind of yakking back and forth. It's not often you hear the offense do it. We hear the defense do it all the time. How different is that for you? What's it been like playing against uh, Fitz and, and kind of everything that, he's, that he shows out there? You know, Fitz, man, he got a, a, a broad personality, man. He, he's the guy that talk noise. Uh, one, one play I was tired, and he was like, well, I'm coming at you if you're tired. So, you know, he's just out there just making you better and having you on top of your game. He, he don't let you rest not one play. <laughs> I'm kind of, uh, I kind of do it on the low, you know. <laughs> I kind of do it in plays on the low. I'm not a big get in front of the media guy and do all that. I'll tell you a little bit on the field, though. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit. <laughs> William, I, I would see you talking and working with Chris Harris, you know, after practices sometimes in Richmond. How, how has he been to work with and how has he helped you kind of adjust to, you know, everything here and, and, and the new scheme and everything? He, he's a... a a great coach to play for, I would say that. He's, he, he go all the way down to the small details. He have energy every day, like every day. And you need that, you know, when the, league, when the season get long and you need that energy from your coach. He's, he's very high spirit and I love that about him. Mean more to you as a player to have a coach who has played your position? Oh yeah, it, it definitely do because he know what I'm thinking out there. He know uh, what I did wrong or what I didn't do wrong because he played the game and he, he get it. William, kind of going back to the trash talk, how much does it actually, when you see it out there, how much does it actually affect the opponent? I mean, we've seen it a little bit on the offensive line. We saw the scuffle. But when you're yeah. actually out there, I mean, how much does it really help you at your game to get into somebody's head? Or, like, when do you know you've gotten in somebody's head and thrown them off their game? Oh, you, you definitely know when they start talking back. You know, when they start talking back and start giving you a little bit, then you know you're going somewhere with it. But the scary guy is the one that don't say nothing. <laughs> Can you explain why are those guys that don't say anything back so scary then? I'm, I'm not sure. Like, I used to play against AJ Green every day, and I talk a little something to him, and he'd be like, "Okay," and that's 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 a scary guy right there.